Hi everyone and welcome to the episode 3 of Machine Learning with R, a really fantastic journey. I'm Hamid Reza Bolhassani, PhD of Computer Engineering, researcher, data scientist and founder of DataBiox. I'm really happy to see you again in this episode. So as you remember in the previous episodes we started with the machine learning definition and some fundamental concepts then uh, go through regression, some examples and the codes and uh, in the previous episode we have introduced and discussed clustering clustering by k-means and uh, some uh, nice examples from iris data set as you remember uh, we already covered this data set uh, clustering this data set of flowers uh, by k-means as you remember we have uh, reached this re uh, we have uh, got this result uh, by running k-means uh, clustering of this data set before I forgot and before I uh, continue this concept I just uh, uh, one idea came to my mind to uh, so, uh, to um, check that uh, how this algorithm works on uh, mm, uh, another data set like empty cars do you remember empty cars a data set of cars yeah mm, let me let me show you the head of that data set empty cars I think you remember, yes, uh, some specification of the cars, a uh, built-in data set in R. So let's uh, just um, uh, check to clustering, to do this clustering algorithm on uh, this uh, data set. So first of all, uh, let's put k-means dot result k means uh, dot result yeah this time uh, we can say k means two yes k means two dot result into k means this time empty cars yes and we wanna uh, make uh, two for example two category or three okay three yeah and then uh, just copy these two yeah and then instead of iris two empty cars and uh, you remember we had wt as weight and also mpg mile per, mile per gallon okay so here we can have uh, wt and here we can have a uh, mile per gallon and k means two here yeah that result yes here again k means two and here again we have wt and here mpg okay so let's run this and check uh, what is uh, the result control enter so yeah we can see we have three we have three clusters here you see, for example, this is for uh, lightweight cars. Yeah, with, uh, with, yeah, with this MPG. This is for medium weight cars. And this is for uh, high weight cars. Yes, three clusters. But uh, the black one, uh, but some of them have overlapping here. But it's just an example. I wanted to show you another thing and all you can also run this on your favorite data sets and check how it works and here we also can make it two and check uh, what would be the result yeah here it's um, I think the separation of these two clusters is uh, more uh, clear here but let's also check the four okay you can uh, but not good like this I think two or three uh, three would be very better okay so it was just uh, some examples and then uh, let's continue so you remember this and um, today our discussion is about this K, K medoids okay because uh, since we already have covered this and in this episode we want to cover this and uh, these are uh, uh, you will see these are similar and uh, let's just uh, before I forgot this uh, 
presentation is from Carnegie Mellon University and it's available on the web it is nice presentation and you can use it so this time let's focus on this and using the uh, first of all like previous episode uh, focus on the some uh, basic concepts and then go to the R code so yeah so you remember what is clustering dividing up data dividing up data into groups or clusters so that points in any group are more similar to each other than to points outside the group and yeah divide as a summary dividing a reduce present reduce presentation of the full data uh, for example vector quantization and discovery with clustering we will uh, looking will we are looking for new insight insight is very important into the structure of the data finding group of the student for example commit similar mistakes or uh, so etc okay uh, yeah and these are things you see how it works we already discuss and show you showed you and uh, yeah so let's see here yeah uh, in the um, slide 17 it will uh -huh, it will introduce k medoids k medoid algorithm so in some applications we want e we want each center to be one of the points itself this is where it's very important point we want each center to be the one of the points itself this is where k medoids come in an algorithm similar to k-means algorithm very similar except when fitting the centers we restrict we restrict our attention to the points themselves it's the different yeah so you already know uh, so now you know the difference between these two algorithms and uh, you can study and read the different the uh, some more theoretical and background and fundamental concepts you see the initial centers here for example this one then iteration one two three and finally this yeah uh, we see that the points center points should be one of the uh, points in the cluster mm -hmm. so yeah and these are some uh, theoretical and background concepts that you can uh, read in the document uh, it's on, available on the website of Carnegie Mellon University and also I will share for you and you can read it so let's see here you remember we already covered this yes in the previous episode the clustering clustering these nice flower data sets with k-means uh, using these codes if you remember if you don't remember you can have a look have a, pause this video and have a look but uh, what is our purpose in this um, episode is this k medoid and uh, this is also another nice presentation from one of the i think italian universities here is the um, yeah here is the reference you can see and uh, this is uh, some history about k medoids or uh, in other words pam mm -hmm. partitioning around medoids it's introduced in 1987 yeah start from initial set and so on you see uh, that uh, you already see this and uh, we don't want to go through more details so let's just uh, go through this and check the codes and make a uh, hands-on experience make uh, our hands dirty for uh, getting experience on the codes okay so here you see the some definitions and uh, yeah this is partitioning around medoid so uh, let's first of all introduce this library cluster and then again for iris 2 uh, run this 
clustering algorithm on this uh, you remember we have put iris uh, iris data set on iris 2 yeah so let's see first of all uh, we can uh, yeah we can have a new file library cluster yes and then again iris 2 iris and then uh, so we'll see that yes pam result will pam dot result will put pam iris 2 into three category and see yeah and also you can see uh, here we will we want to check we want to check and verify or validate the results of pam with this uh yeah let's see mm. so first of all let's yeah uh oh sorry here i should put this yes yes yes, yes. okay and then uh let's see table uh we see that here we want to check pam pam result pam result cluster pam result clustering and then with what iris a species yeah you see here for setosa again a good uh, we can separate setosa the first one uh, very clearly from the others it can uh, excellently or well separated and uh, for the two others uh, maybe some uh, uh, some overlapping yeah and here uh, yeah uh, here we can also see that uh, the cluster one is especially setosa and is well separated from the other two you see and cluster two is mainly composed of versicolor plus some cases of virginica you see some cases of virginica and this one also uh, two uh, this is virgin uh, virginica with two cases of versicolor and zero of setosa so it's uh, I think it's good. So let's plot this result. Yeah, you see here he said it says that hit hit return to see the next plot. Okay, we will put we will uh, uh, hit enter. Yeah. You see that the two components explain 95.02% of the point availability. Again, yeah, this is another cluster. So if we want to check the first, we can see this. Yeah, component one and component two. Yeah, this is the result of PAM on this data set you see like this and this is uh, another silhouette plot of pan yeah this is another uh, clustering uh, method you you saw that uh, also the result was uh, good and uh, reasonable yeah so you see that yeah the left chart is two dimensional Class plot, clustering plot of three clusters and their lines shows the distance between clusters. You see, we have three clusters. Yes, the first cluster you see that is well separated, and the two are the two have some overlapping together. But uh, as we see, the result is good. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the right chart shows the silhouette uh, yeah another a large si 
suggests that the corresponding observations are very well clustered. Yeah, you see here, mm, the large SI. We'll see, yeah. The better cluster, yes? So for the first one, you see the SI is uh, more. So you see that the large, mm -hmm. again, a large SI almost one suggests that the corresponding corresponding observation are very well. Mm. A small SI near around zero means that the observation lies between two clusters and observation with a negative SI are probably placed in the wrong cluster. Yeah, you, remember, you see that the first one is near is a uh, uh, 0.80. So um, the, uh, the silhouette with of cluster one is uh, 0.80, which means it is well clustered and separated from other clusters. The other two are of relatively low silhouette with uh, 0.42 and 0.45, and they are somewhat overlapped with each other with each other as we already discussed it. Okay, so this is yes another uh, thing on another some operation with PAM K, uh, which will be covered in the next episode. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and uh, hope see you in the next videos. Bye.